Hey, how's it going, nerds who love art? And welcome to another session of Torture. I mean, welcome to another DD Mark video. <laughs> and yeah, like I said, it is I, DD Mark. And uh, I've asked ye matey. I don't know why I started talking like that. I thought I could just roll with it, but yeah, nah, that didn't work out. <clears throat> but yeah, usual cringy intro side. Let's get into the topic of this video. And I know that you know that I know that you guys read the video title. Otherwise, why would you be here? This video is my. Hold up, let me say that a little louder for the people who will come in here with hate energy. My opinion on what it means to be a great artist and what it takes to become one. So first and foremost, let me ask you, Art Nerd, what is the definition of a great artist? Well, if you ask me, the definition of a great artist is objective. It depends on who you ask. Nani? So what's the point of the video then, DD Mark? Well, hold on, I'm getting there. But yeah, a great artist is objective in the sense that my definition of great artist is different from yours and it's different from that guy over there and that girl over there and that person over there. You see what I'm getting at? Don't let anybody try to tell you what you should think good art is. They can suck a butt, you know what I mean? For example, in my head, Eiichiro Oda, Pablo Picasso, and Akira Toriyama are not great artists. Wait! Wait! Put your weapons, pitchforks, and Twitter down. Don't cancel or attack me just yet. Let me explain myself. To me, a great artist is someone who has high skill in terms of depicting the world around us, not necessarily realistically. It can be stylized, but all in all, it depends on how the art makes me feel. So art by Picasso, Toriyama, and Oda make me feel nothing. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you see what I mean? So when people tell me that Oda is a great artist, to them, I understand. After all, Oda is still someone I look up to for their hard work, dedication, storytelling skills, and passion for his work. But I do not like the art in One Piece, and that's okay. And that goes for Akira Toriyama and Dragon Ball. To me, a great artist is Jim Lee and Yusuke Murata. As you would have probably seen their art on the screen now, you now have an idea of what my taste is. So yeah, you know, I just had to say that before I delve deeper into the topic of the video. So don't worry, this video is not a cop out. I'll tell you what I think in terms of how to become societally acknowledged as a great artist. Okay, like I just said, Let's pretend greatness in art simply means the societal perception of greatness. People who are heralded as pioneers in their genres and also held to high standards within the industry, you know, es essentially people who get the big bucks or their artwork are sold for the big bucks. You know, people like Toriyama, Van Gogh, Picasso, Takeshi Murakami, Basquiat, etc. And yeah, you know, I'll tell you what I think in terms of how to become like these people and the traits they have. So, to become a great artist, let's tackle this discussion in three sections. So first off, if you want to become a great artist or like a specific great artist, I recommend you do back research. You know, like read about their life, their childhood, their early career, and most importantly, read about their failures because this might come as a surprise to some of you, but they have many, many failures. Failures that in my opinion are not highlighted nearly enough by the media that constantly cover them. Reading and doing the research about these artists as people will give you an idea about their mindset and their traits. This leads me to my next section, which is to emulate them. Yes, you know, it goes without saying that if you want to become like someone, you should emulate them. Now, am I recommending this? Am I recommending that you absolutely copy them and their work down to the T? No. What I want you all to do is emulate their determination, their passion, and the relentlessness of these people because most of the people who are widely known around the world and are considered great artists are absolutely passionate about their work. I mean, I bet it's on their mind like 90%, if not 100% of the time. You know, they walk around thinking about how to be better, how to reach the next level. They are constantly working and getting better at their craft. They dream about it when they're asleep. They think about it when they're awake, when they eat, when they work out, on the toilet. Literally, if you need an example of how dedicated these people are, just read up on the schedule of the mangaka of One Piece Age Roda. That shit will make you think that this guy is an absolute lunatic. And get this, no one is making him do these things or have this schedule. It's of his own accord. My man got an editor and one of the first things he said to this editor is, die for One Piece. Bruh. Essentially, artists like Oda and the others I've mentioned in this video have enough passion and determination to fill up an ocean. I'd argue that that's one of the reasons we love their work so much. It's because their passion bleeds into the page, into the canvas, onto their sculptures. This leads me to my next section, which might not be so inspirational or positive, and it's hard work and determination are nothing if you don't have a little bit of luck. 
There are thousands, if not millions of artists who have had the same amount of determination and hard work ethic, if not double that, that have lived and died on this planet and the world never heard of them. This, this is the harsh reality of being an artist. Any great artist who said that they made it completely on their own and refuses to acknowledge luck as a factor is speaking cap and ease, my guy. They are capping. So if hearing this point about luck demotivates you from reaching this goal, here's what I'll say. It shouldn't. Your passion should be enough to keep you driven, to keep you drawing or painting or sculpting because luck only benefits those who are ready. And putting in the work ensures that you are ready when luck comes around. One last thing I'll say in this video that I've noticed about great artists is that they're always hungry. Not literally, but I mean they're never satisfied. The artwork is never good enough. And if you ask me, I think this is necessary to become not only great, but just like, you know, good. Like think about it, you will never improve if you don't recognize the need for it. So essentially, this whole video led me right here to tell you all this. Stay hungry people. Do not let satisfaction be the enemy of your growth. Also, I'll say this, know what you want. What I'm saying is, if you want to become the best, you gotta have the hunger. You know, if you're an everyday dude who's just trying to draw for fun or for Instagram or, you know, just draw a comic and you're happy with how it looks and you have no aspirations of being the GOAT or the best, you're all good, man. You know, and I respect that. But if you want to stand next to the artist you consider great in your mind as an equal, hopefully this video helped. P.S. I might have said artist a lot, but this could apply to whatever. Basketball, football. No, not that football. The real one and you know, music, acting, etc. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I wanna talk about. All right, thank you all for watching this little more ranty video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button as well. And if you'd like to be notified when my dumb self drops a new video, hit the notification bell because I release videos weekly. And also don't forget to leave a comment because I respond to any and all comments. Till next time, art nerds. It's been DD Passionate and peace.